everybody, my name is Ed. Uh, okay, so new comic books haul. Um, let's see here. I just want to talk about a couple of comic books that I bought last week, and then I'll tell you about the stuff I bought this week. Um, this week's reviews are brought to us by I Scream, You Scream, We All Scream, for Miller in a Can. Um, okay, so Astro City number one, Kurt Busiak, um, Brent Anderson, and Alex Ross cover. This is the 100th issue. It's technically issue 41 of this volume, but if you combine this volume with the other volumes that have come out previously, you get to 100, issue 100. Um, pretty nice issue. Uh, basically, we take a look at this guy, the uh, Astronaut, um, kind of a period piece. Uh, it starts in the late 30s or 40s or whatever, and basically we get the backstory of uh, this guy who's kind of like a rocketeer type um, character and basically how he goes from being a hero to being somebody who's kind of um, kind of uh, uh, distrusted by the population and then his he, eventual, I guess, redemption, for lack of a better term. And I, I really enjoy it. Basically, well, I don't want to give too much of the story away, uh, but uh, like I said, it starts, he's this kind of... Uh, inventor guy he kind of falls into being a crime fighter then world war ii breaks out and then he's kind of reluctant to give his inventions over to um you know over to the military uh, because he's got his inventions then he's uh you know found technology from other worlds and things like that and it's the old trope of you know is this technology too dangerous uh, for normal human beings or whatever, and not uh, and not uh, it, it's kind of a trope you've seen before in comics and movies, but I think they do a pretty good job here. Uh, like I said before, I've always loved the fact that um, the Astro City stories uh, take place in real time. I like the fact that the characters grow older. I like the fact that um, uh, Kurt's able to blend the stories with a actual history as well as, you know, kind of pulp and superhero history. So when the story's set in the uh, 60s or 70s, you have Silver Age characters. When it's set in the 40s, you have kind of pulpy characters. Uh, the few stories that take place uh, before then, the characters are more kind of like folklore or myth mythic type characters, for lack of a better word. So yeah, there were some issues maybe over the last year or two that kind of fell flat, but I think Kurt is kind of back on, on top. Um, you know, we're getting some really quality stories out of him again. Oh, I just wanted to talk about the hero. Look good at his face. I think, let me find a better picture here. I think he supposedly modeled after... Uh, is this Clark Gable? Does this look like Clark Gable to anybody? I think he's supposed to be Clark Gable slash Howard Hughes or something like that. So that's fun. All right. Other comic book that I got last week and read was Loose Ends number two. Uh, kind of enjoying it. Not too sure where this comic book is going to go. Uh, basically, it looks like they're still setting everything up. We're being introduced. We're kind of introduced to the character's last issue. You know, we've got this kind of mean jock guy, this semi-stoner guy. We've got the lead female here. There's a couple other women involved. Uh, there's some guys who seem to be drug dealers. This issue, we get a flashback with uh, some corrupt cops. And um, we get a few other cashbacks to uh, this character and this character's history. Um, so we don't know the whole story yet. And it's, um, you know, so, but I am kind of interested in seeing how they're all going to connect and whatnot. My only complaint is the lead female character so far. Actually, I won't say she's, how do I put this? Uh, she really seems more like the object of desire as opposed to being a uh, character on her, um, a proactive character. That's what I want to say. She seems less a proactive character, more, you know, the character that, you know, this guy's got to save or whatever, you know. It's not quite damsel in distress um, trope, but it's close. But then again, like I said, this is the very beginning um, I'm sure they're going to take their time telling this story. So, 
So yeah, uh, it's, it's fairly well written. I like the exaggerated art and everything. So I'm definitely on board to at least see where it's going um, for the meantime. Okay, before we forget, cheers. This, oh, oh Jesus. Okay, uh, this week's comics, Paper Girls number three. Um, Paper Girls, just top-notch comic book, uh, solid storytelling, really good writing. Um, I think Brian, uh, K, Brian K. Vaughn has done an excellent job at, um, you know, fleshing out the personalities of the girls. They're from the 80s. They've tra time traveled into the uh, present day. Meanwhile, there's time travelers from the future coming back. And this issue, we have more with the kind of, for lack of a better word, cave girl and her baby. And now there's some other scientists who kind of come into uh, the mix and weird monsters are popping up. And uh, it's just um, it's just a really fun, well-written, well-crafted story. Uh, like I said, probably the best angle. Well, the for best thing about the comic book is the art. Just really masterful uh, pencils and inks, and the coloring in this comic book is just awesome. Um, and and also, like I said, the the relationship between the girls and how they react to everything is is great as well. So, not too sure how long this comic book is going to go on, uh, but I'm I'm in for the duration. Comic book that I was really looking forward to is America Number One. Uh, have you read it? I hate to say it, I was slightly disappointed. I don't think it was a bad comic book, but uh, it's like it's just this side of okay. I thought the dialogue was a little bit clunky, and the art, I liked it in the first half, but the second half, it looked kind of rushed. Uh, there's two different inkers, so maybe that has something to do with it. It um, It's written by... Oh, wait, here. Here's all the credits right here. Gabby Rivera, Joe Quinones, uh, Joe Rivera, and Pablo uh, Rivera do the inks. And Jose Villarubia, I guess, is the colorist. Yeah, he's the colorist. Uh, basically, uh, Miss America... Uh, Chavez is this character who comes from this other dimension. She's stuck in our dimension, and because basically she really literally has nothing better to do, she decides she's going to be a superhero. So she's got super strength, and she can... Can she fly? I think she can kind of jump long distances. And she has the power to kind of, like, sort of teleport. They, they don't use it quite the same way a character like Nightcrawler or somebody uses it. It's more like she travels. She gets from place to place by traveling through dimensions or something like that. But anyway, in this issue, uh, she decides she's going to go back to college. And that's basically it. She she leaves her girlfriend. Um, she goes out west, I guess, to college. And the college is kind of weird. It looks like it's got normal people, like it's a normal college, sort of. But there's also... People who seem to have paranormal abilities there, and there seems to be high-tech pseudoscience fiction-y things going on. So it's somewhere kind of a cross between, like I said, a normal college and something you'd see out of the X-Men or something like that. So it's it's okay. <laughs> what it really got me hot for, which I was kind of hot for before, is I really want to see the Joe Casey uh, independent comic which is going to be called All American Comics with an X. And for people who don't know, Joe Casey originally created this character here for Marvel um, during one of their uh, one of their crossovers, one of their events. Well, it was actually during Dark Reign. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll comment on that in a moment. But it was it was during it was during Dark Reign, one of the Dark Reign spinoffs or whatever, and then. Uh, Kieran Gillen used used the character in the Young Avengers comic, and the character kind of got kind of a small fan base or whatever going on. So, so we get this. But now Joe, the guy who's the original creator of the character, obviously he can't do this because Marvel Comics owns the trademark on this character, 
So he's doing an imitation of the character that he originally created. You know, it's kind of like Steve Englehart creates Bantus for uh, Marvel Comics in the late 70s. And he leaves Marvel, so then he has these proxy characters show up, like Willow over in, the, over in Justice League of America, and um, uh, what was the character? Lorelai in Scorpio Rose, which was an indie comic he did back in the 80s, where it's basically that character, and he's kind of moved it on to these other um, companies or whatever. Um, what was I going to say about Dark Brain? Oh, I, I'm not just gonna, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, but it's just that, you know, a few years back, we have Dark Reign, and then we have The Siege, and then right after that, we have The Heroic Age, and that's when we're going to get away from all this grim and gritty stuff, and, and Steve Rogers is back, and, and we're rebooting The Avengers, and it's all going to be about saving the world and, and hopeful, optimistic stuff and stuff like that. And it's just that, you know, right now the big news is, oh no, after Secret Empire... You know, we're going to get back to meat and potatoes. And it's like, you know, we, we have such short memories that we forget that, you know, this is just how the cycle goes with like Marvel and DC comics. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's just like, you know, you know. Anyway, uh, next comic, Hawkeye number four, uh, Kelly Thompson and Leonardo Romero. Uh, I really enjoy this comic book. I, I think it's really well written. I think it's really well crafted. Uh, like the uh, voice that uh, Thompson is writes um, um, Kate with, I I like the it's a it's a really tightly plotted and tightly written thing. Um, you know, it's not it, it doesn't feel really decompressed or anything. Really like the art style. Really like the whole layouts. Um, I I really enjoy the fact that it looks like a comic book comic book. And the visuals are things that you can only do with a comic book. You know what I mean? And you know what? It's a similar tone. I should say America is actually trying for a similar tone with this comic book. But this comic book does it way, 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 so much way better than um, uh, America did. So, okay. Also got Apollo and Midnighter, or I'm sorry, Midnighter and Apollo number six. This is the last issue of uh, four issue, or can't talk. Uh, last issue of a six issue series. Uh, really um, satisfying wrap up to the story where basically Apollo goes to hell and Midnighter has to go to hell and save him. And, uh, and it works. I think. It seemed like there was a danger of, of Apollo um, kind of being the damsel in distress or the dude in distress almost, but it didn't really work out that way. So, of course, you got to see Midnighter be badass, but Apollo has his moments, his cool badass moments as well. Although it was smartly written, it was clever. Uh, this comic book, you know, well, I, I, I won't get into that. I'll, we'll save that for another video. But um, there are obviously a couple... And it doesn't kind of shy away from it or anything like that. It's just presented in a kind of matter-of-fact way. And, and, and that's great. I um, like the art. Really fun. Um, I don't know if they're going to, you know, reboot this comic or revamp it or anything like that. I kind of hope they do. I thought George Orlando did a really good job uh, writing the characters. So, yeah. Really good, um, cool miniseries, I guess. Um, other comic books I got this week but didn't get around to reading, I got Think Tank. This is written by Matt Hawkins and the artist uh, Rasan Ikido. I don't know. I know Matt Hawkins has been around for a while. I haven't written, I haven't read anything that he's uh, written. I guess he does Postal. And in the back matter, uh, they mention some other comics he's, he's done for Image and stuff, and it's just like <laughs> For whatever reason, I've just never read any of his stuff. Um, it looks like a kind of interesting sort of science fiction espionage story, so I'll check it out. We'll see how it goes. And the other two things I got were catching up on Green Arrow. I got Green Arrow 15, and I got Green Arrow 16. Um, I really like this Neil Adams cover here. 
Neil Adams, of course, did the classic Green Lantern, Green Arrow run back in the early 70s. And recently, he's kind of come back to doing, like, covers and variants and stuff for the big two. And I think he's done some stuff for, like, Zenoscope, of all people. And some of those care, uh, covers really don't measure up to, you know, him at his peak or whatever. But I think his Green Arrow covers have been really good. Some of, some of the... Uh, was it last month or the month before's uh, variants he did for DC where he, like, did spruce of his old DC covers. Um, I think those were actually pretty good as well. But, um, but yeah, Nito Keen. Okay, so uh, that's it. Um, I got to thank you very much for watching. Everybody have a good day.